Let's talk about Jonathan Taylor, though, being on the PUP designation. Mm -hmm. He was on there before. They thought they'd get a trade done. If they get a trade done, probably a deal done. Then he's cleared. He's back playing for another team. Whenever they said, hey, Jonathan Taylor, you go find a trade partner, we will potentially go ahead and execute the trade at this stage, even though at one point they said, we aren't trading them ever, brother. Mm -hmm. Not now, not October, not never. You're not running this not thing. Ever. We are running this thing. So whenever they go and say, hey, you can go find a trade partner, all the reporters... All of them. Shefty from ESPN, his crew. Mm -hmm. Rappaport from NFL Network, his crew. There's going to be a lot of interest in Jonathan Taylor. A lot of teams are going to be interested in Jonathan Taylor. Everybody's going to be interested. So I think a lot of us Colts fans said, okay, cool. This is going to get handled quickly. This situation, he will get traded for. Bang, he's out of there. We'll get something in return. Whether it's picks, whether it's a player. Of course. Whatever it is, how a trade works. Yeah. We thought as Colts fans, we got our best player out of the building who doesn't want to be there. Although it would be better if he was all in and playing for the Colts. We'd like it. And we're going to get something back in return. And then the Anthony Richardson era is off and running. So now we're hearing that no deal was able to be made. And another team that was in there allegedly other than Dolphins is Green Bay Packers. Whoa. Mm -hmm. So Green Bay, who already has A.J. Dillon and Aaron Jones, were allegedly the mystery team that was in the conversation with the Colts to trade for Jonathan Taylor. Would have been fascinating if we get one of those running backs back probably. Yep. I would assume that's going to be... I, I would think... A.J. Dillon would be who they were trying to get but rid of. But Colt's probably asking for, for Aaron Jones. Aaron yeah. Jones. So then whenever it comes out from a Miami Dolphins reporter that from my sources, and I can confirm the Dolphins person as reportedly by ND Media, the Colts made wild requests from Miami, including Waddle and more. So in a trade conversation, they made a wild request asking for their number two wide receiver when we're giving up our best player in this trade who's not happy to be there. They were trying to frame it as if the Colts would not accept any trade offer that was coming. They made what, these requests that were impossible to fulfill. It's like, I don't think that's a wild request at all by the Indianapolis Colts. Now, I obviously got killed by some people who are Dolphins fans because they're saying, we're never going to give up Waddle. We're never going to give up Waddle. It's like, well, if you're the Indianapolis Colts, you're giving up Jonathan Taylor, who was in the MVP conversation a couple of weeks ago, or a couple of years ago. A request should certainly be at least the number two wide receiver for the other team, especially <laughs> if you don't have any wide receivers on there. This is a request. Hey, Pat, how much do you want a year for your show? $250 million. Mm -hmm. That's my request. Okay, now let's go ahead and get in there. A wild request would have been Tyreek Hill. We want Vic Fangio, too, mm -hmm. off the defensive of staff. Like, I think that wasn't a wild request at all to ask for the number two wide receiver back, especially if they're not going to give up as many picks as potentially was desired. That's a good trade conversation. So although they're kind of all these reporters who reported there's going to be mm -hmm. a lot of interest for Jonathan Taylor are going to try to frame this as like the Colts made it impossible to trade. I don't think that is necessarily evidence of that. It might be the case, though. It might come out that the Colts were looking for two number ones and they're looking for something else, yeah. which no team would give up. But saying that was a wild request here by Barry Jackson, who has been in the game a long time. I don't I don't really think that's that wild of a of a waddle. And then if the Dolphins go, no, it's like, all right, let's go. Let's, yeah. figure, let's, let's go talk to the Packers. Yeah, but saying it's a wild request, I, I think that was just wa weird, but I think they're all trying to frame it so they're right in the end. And that there was a bunch of interest, and the coach just didn't want to make it happen, but we shall see how it turns out. It was no interest. If it was interest, they would have made it happen. Like, no one is going to give up their MVP candidate and not get something in return, whether it's the first round or second round. A uh, uh, number two receiver, a uh, number one tight end. Like, you got to get some in return. Like, obviously, it was not enough interest. I mean, interest. Interest? Yeah, interest. Yeah. It's a weird word, though. Uh, it's, it. it's spelled weird. Yep. It's an interesting thing. <laughs> it's also used in yeah. that particular right. fashion mm -hmm. as well, which I is agree. wild. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I assumed with how everybody was reporting about the interest that there would be some deal that would come. And when Florio presented the idea that the Colts would just move on, going to want to take best offer pretty much, I, I, all right, maybe want to get him out of here. But now that it's at four million, seemingly, he's on the PUP. They got four more weeks to kind of deal with this whenever yep. the regular season starts. So that's Ma cut in half. Maybe they're able to find though. Maybe they're able to find a trade partner. But this feels like if they're not able to trade him, and he's on the PUP, that's four weeks. Yep. He's, his number is probably going to be yet again if he stays here and plays. If after the four weeks he's back, probably going to be similar to what they were last year, which are not great. So he. 
potentially he's fucked here. Oh, yeah. You know, like, I, I don't, there's a lot of time that this could happen and somebody could injure a running back. And there might be a San Francisco 49ers out there that say, you know what? Give us Christian McCaffrey off the Carolina Panthers mm-hmm. and they make a big time play. And maybe Jonathan Taylor will be viewed in that way by a team if somebody gets hurt earlier in the running back move. But this, this doesn't feel like this is going to end good for Jonathan Taylor at this stage of the game. Although I thought just yesterday a deal was going to get done by 4 p.m. It didn't really make sense to me at first when I saw that the Packers were like the mystery team. But as I've been sitting here and kind of thinking of it more, like mm-hmm. I think there is, a, I think that does have some legs and they might trade for him before the trade deadline. Like you just think about it, like Aaron Jones, it's kind of a foregone conclusion. Like this is probably his last year with the Packers. A.J. Dillon is on the last year of his rookie deal. So they have the – I mean, if Rodgers plays 60% Wisconsin. of the snaps, they have another first-round pick. Yeah, he's beloved in Wisconsin. He went there. Like, he's still young. Like, I really could see the Packers after he gets off PUP or maybe, you know, who knows. Maybe now that the Dolphins thing seems like bullshit, they kind of iron it out a little bit more. Like, this morning I was like, well, that that makes absolutely no sense. But just sitting here for the last, like, couple hours and thinking about it, like, I could really see the Packers doing this. A.J. Mm-hmm. Dillon is king of Wisconsin. Ain't he the actual mayor over there? Uh, you yeah. guys got to trade him out of time? Jeez, the Packers wow. continue to send these people out of there. It would be A.J. Dillon. You would think that they would think about you would, trading out of there. Yeah, you would think. But is Chris Ballard like, so let me get this straight. Yeah. But th- but that's what I mean is they could potentially get like okay well then we we they yeah. can give a first round pick if they don't you know it might be the Jets first round pick if Rodgers plays sixty percent of the snaps that's at the tail end of the first round but at some point Chris Ballard will be on this program mm-hmm. okay Chris Ballard will be on this program oh yeah and he won't give us an answer with that Southern accent about no. what all the actual offers were we'll have to read his body language but I assume there will be information that'll get out there that'll be like the best offer we got was a fourth rounder right. And something else, or a third rounder, and something else. If the Colts aren't trying to just no, 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 right, not actually negotiating in good faith is how this is described. By the way, they're not negotiating in good faith. They are not trying to get a deal done. They are making wild requests for the second their second wide receiver. Whenever we're giving up a guy that everybody in the league, right, everybody, all the national audience is like, why are why are you letting the best player oh, yeah. off your team? And then now all of a sudden it's a wild request to say, hey, if you're not going to give us a one, we it needs something here, so we'll take your second wide receiver. I, I just don't fully con- – I don't think we're getting a clear picture on what's actually happening behind the scenes from anybody, although it feels like all the reporters and insiders are literally all on the same page, but now it's kind of just – not the case at all. It's. I'll be excited to hear if we ever learn exactly how this whole thing went went down behind closed doors. Yeah, it feels like there's no way we, we will. Hopefully, we do, but I don't see how it can you know get to that point where they're telling that story. But do you see anybody paying him still? Like I, I, I understand he could get traded, and maybe it is a team like the Packers or one of those teams that starts slow. Like when the Niners got McCaffrey, it wasn't where they were the you know 13 and four Niners yet. They were still kind of figuring out because Trey Lance and Jimmy G and then Purdy after. So I feel like it could be a Packers team, a a Dolphins team, or even one of the better teams like the Bills or the Eagles who are like, we could get a little better at running back and then we will be a legitimate Super Bowl fan. Is he healthy? Ty. Yeah, yeah, like he, as the owner of the Packers, you're sitting uh, here telling me that you were willing to trade your running back and a number one that you got from Aaron Rodgers? No, not necessarily. I'm just saying, like, it, they're not going to be there. Yeah, exactly. Well, right. That's one of them is, right? You assume they negotiate a deal with somebody. Yeah, exactly. Probably the mayor of Wisconsin, A.J. Dillon, because he'll be cheaper. Eh, maybe, but I, I don't know because I, 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 I don't want to say that he's been, like, you know, but like he has not been as, as good, I think, as. It's not like after this season they're just no matter what going to resign him. I guess that's that's the way to put. Well, it. with Trey Lance, hopefully, you know maybe he'll get a little bit more of a running operation or mm-hmm. opportunity. But I agree with that. With those two headed, that two headed monster seemingly in the backfield, you would think that you'd be able to just win games with them because yeah. how good Aaron Jones is. Aaron yeah. Jones is great. He's unbelievable. Mm-hmm. He's already a phenomenal been, football player. Yeah, already been paid too, so you could yeah. probably resign him more than Dylan, right? Because Dylan hasn't been paid yet. So like Chris Ballard, yeah, I would assume the deal is going to be easier to get done with Aaron Jones at the running back position than like Dalvin Cook, for instance. Yeah, yeah. Dalvin Cook, the deal he took eight million bucks. All right, yeah. deal. Give me the fight. We're cool. Yeah, they did a Zoom call. Doesn't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna go take eight million dollars to play football for the New York Jets and hopefully win a Super Bowl. I appreciate Dalvin Cook pretty much saying that, but I, I didn't like. They're framing it the way it's being framed is fascinating because I think everybody wanted to see Jonathan Taylor get traded. 
I think everybody expected Jonathan Taylor to get traded, but I think all those people didn't really look into like last year for Jonathan Taylor. They were living off of two years ago for Jonathan Taylor. You're looking at a guy who's been missing practice allegedly and miss, was out of the building because of an ankle injury still. So this guy's still hurt, missed games last year, and had a bad year. The whole team had a bad year last year. It's like I, I didn't understand whenever Rappaport was like, there's going to be a lot of interest. And Schefter was like, getting emotional about like yeah. Yeah. how much interest there's going to be. I'm like, okay, well, I guess if you can find a great player, you're going to do anything to get a great player. I think we we're misled a little bit. I think we we're misled yeah. a little bit. But I hope Jonathan Taylor ends up getting a deal done with Jim Irsay. That's what I hope happens. Mm -hmm. I think I think that's why it's hard from like people outside looking at it because I think they think Jim's pulling all the strings. I don't. I think the outside world thinks that Ballard's not even involved in it at all, and that's why they. So you think Jim Irsay, brother, need to what? What's that? I saw it. What was that clip? The guy did this. <laughs> yeah. He's probably oh, asking. Cool. He's probably asking Miami for a new fucking whale. Okay, you killed Takate, <laughs> so mm -hmm. right that Nita already in debt. What do you gonna, say? A little gonna, bit more. I was gonna ask for Agent Zero, but yeah. killed Takate. <laughs> got to bump up the depth chart a mm -hmm. little bit. We got Take no one. real weapons on our team, so I, this just who knows how this pans out. Who knows what's real and what isn't. Right. At this stage. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit of irony in that. Isn't wasn't Ursay in the draft room, Prod and Ballard, like, hey Ballard, isn't that the running back you like Jordan? Trade it up to yeah. get Jonathan Taylor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That that was the mm -hmm. that was where we were. It was worth it too. Absolutely. Yeah. Guy crushed it. Yeah. But yeah, the story of draft night is that Jim Ursay looked at Ballard and we were like fifteen picks away or something like that. Or ten picks away, I forget the exact. And he goes, Don't you really like that running back from Wisconsin? And Jim Ursay had seen him. Big Ten mm -hmm. Championship mm -hmm. in his stadium. Right. Uh -huh. Don't you really like that guy? And Chris is like, yeah, if he's there, uh, we fucking love him. Jim's like, don't we really want that guy <laughs> on our team? And Chris is like, yeah, we're going to take him. And then Chris is like, all right, we'll trade up to fucking get this Sweet. guy. Mm -hmm. And then to get him. And it's like, thank God we got our guy. And as soon as Jonathan Taylor comes in the building, big smile, happy to be here, excited to be here, love Indianapolis, what? love the team, love being here. The team has not been great since he's been on the team, but he has been something that I think people say, you know what, that's one of the pillars, though. We got that position. If we, we got a guy here, we got a good guy here, we got a good face of the program here, we got an incredible talent, this is going to be one of the pillars. Okay, who else? DeForest Buckner. Okay, we got DeForest mm -hmm. Buckner. He's going to be one of the pillars. Good guy, hardworking guy, defense alignment, too. That's good. Shaq Leonard. All right, here we yep. go. We Quentin Nelson on the offensive line, Ryan Kelly. Yep. We got, like, the pillars here at pretty much all phases. Now we just need to figure out how we get the culture back to a winning one. And then all of a sudden, two months before fucking training camp, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's like the one ruining the culture is one of the guys that we kind of banked on. And I would assume that he thought this was going to be a relatively easy thing. I assume his agent thought this was going to be an easy transaction to happen. And the NFL just kind of looked around and said, nah, we ain't giving you that. No chance. Give you a sixth rounder. Yeah. How about this? Agent Zero, Barrios, fifth rounder, Jonathan Taylor. Done deal. Deal. Let's do it. Jim's brother. I got fucking putter. I, got a <laughs> I don't like it. I don't like what has happened. I don't like it at all, and it's if they're just going to keep them on pup and just keep them away from everybody, it's like we're staring down an even bigger dramatic yeah, yeah. whole situation. So we're kind of just kicking a can down the road. Hopefully they're able to figure it out behind closed doors.